All right, we are here, we are live. All right, I'm just gonna type in we are live. So refresh your screen if you are not seeing me right now, but you should be seeing me right now. Looks like I've got my other computer over here and uh, I can see me over there. So you can probably see me there too. Welcome everyone, we are here for an exciting session together. I want you to know that we're very likely gonna go beyond an hour very likely 90 minutes, maybe even a little bit longer, but I guarantee you, if you stay here right to the end, you are gonna get some gold nuggets of wisdom. We also have a couple special guests. You can probably see them in the bottom right-hand corner there. And uh, we're gonna be hearing from them in a minute. So you can wave to Colleen and to Mick. <laughs> we're gonna head on over to, to talk to them in a few minutes. They're, they've got some information to share with you that I know will absolutely be helpful. So before we switch over to my presentation, what I'd love to do is I'd love to just hear from you and, and understand whether you guys can hear me okay and the sounds coming through qual clearly. And uh, looks like we've got uh, looking good says Trace. Thanks Trace, Trace is part of the Dynamic Destiny's team. I'm very blessed to have him on my team to help me serve you. That's what we're here for. And uh, looks like you're getting some messages too, Colleen. People are saying hello to you. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, Mick too, I'm sure. And uh, we've got some friends on here, some new friends, some folks that are looking to become an author that are considering becoming a best-selling author that have the dream of becoming a New York Times best-selling author. Michelle's saying hello to Colleen and Mick as well, so you guys can say hello to her. And there's some folks that are getting on the line that have been just thinking about writing a book and may not have started on that endeavor. So wherever you are, whether you've already written your book, whether you're thinking about writing your book, whether you've had an inkling of writing a book, well, you're absolutely in the right place because I'm going to be walking through everything that you need to know to really properly prepare yourself. And uh, hi, Lynn, thanks for the nice message there, I appreciate you. Okay, so it looks like we're good. I'm gonna switch over to screen share so that uh, we can go to my presentation, we can dive right into the great content. And I'm gonna be bringing on my special guests momentarily, so stand by for a little injection of some wonderfulness in this, uh, in this presentation. Okay, so come on back, little menu, there we are. Okay, and hit share. And now we're over and you guys should be seeing my presentation, The Bestseller Secrets, that I'm gonna be sharing with you. I'm a New York Times bestselling author, also an international Amazon bestselling author. And I also have a number of clients that are on this call and I have some new folks that are interested in hearing a little bit more about all this wonderful stuff. So welcome guys. So today's webinar is very simple. That's the way I like to keep things simple and fun. You should be having fun in everything that you're doing. So I'm gonna share with you simple ideas, simple understanding, simple techniques that are also extremely effective. Of course, only when you take action. I think you probably already know that. It's not enough to know, it's more important to do. And some easy to follow step-by-step -step instructions. What I do suggest that you do is shut off any other distractions, like any technology that that may be in your way that, uh, oh, I can see, I just looked at actually, we can see you Colleen and we can see you Mick. <laughs> I just looked over at my right hand screen here and I can see as I'm presenting, we can still see Colleen and Mick. So just so you guys know, you're on camera still. Yeah, isn't that cool? <laughs> Colleen's a, a star, so an actress, a performer, a singer, and an author, and we'll hear from her in a moment. So, uh, all right, so that's what we're gonna be doing. I obviously have created some results for myself. I'm gonna be sharing you what those results are, what I've done and how it's really impacted not only my own self-esteem and how I feel about myself, which I want, you to, I want you to think about yourself. I want you to be thinking about positive impact, positive benefit. You know, when I first decided to write my very first book, I had no idea of the benefits of actually completing that task, how much it would impact me personally, not only from just how I felt about myself, self-esteem issues, but also how it positively impacted my family and my life, my pocketbook, my business and all of that. So it's possible for anyone. And uh, as you may or may not know, I'm not formally educated. I didn't come from entrepreneur background. My father was a janitor. My mother was a checkout clerk in a grocery store and they have never run their own business. So I didn't have models necessarily to follow on how to create this success. 
but I was hungry for it and I had that desire and hence the reason why I've created the success. So as of today, we have 13 books that have been completed and I've self-published some of these books. I have published with publishing houses some of these books. Some of these books have been international bestsellers. Some of these books are, uh, I've written myself some books I've actually had ghostwriters or other people write. And I will be sharing with you some ideas on how you can complete your book if you're someone that's like me, meaning you're someone that's not really a big fan of writing. So I wanna talk about that. So I have 13 books, they're translated into 37 languages. The image that you're seeing on the screen is actually a screenshot of my bookshelf where my publisher has sent me different versions of my book in different languages. So you can see my name in English, but all these other languages like Russian and Italian and French and Korean and are all my books in all these other languages. And they're sold in almost a hundred countries in the world now. So from a girl that knew nothing about this business to create this success is pretty awesome. Now, annually, my business is generating well over the seven figure month or seven figure annually and revenue, profitable revenue consistently. None of that happens by accident as well. If you're looking at the picture that's behind that image, there is a photo of me and Bob Proctor on his private jet. Uh, he's a very close personal friend. As a matter of fact, that'll be me tomorrow. I'm flying with Bob on his private jet. We're heading down to LA. And I don't say that or share that to brag. I just want to talk about the rewards that come from being successful. Sometimes people ask me, like, why is it that Bob Proctor is so supportive of you? And I would say it's because I'm a great student of these materials and that I do follow through and take action. And as you know, with anything, it's not enough to just learn or be aware of what's possible. You've got to seek to have a deeper level of understanding and of course, follow through. Because if you're not doing that, you're just simply not going to reap the rewards from that. And so even if you're someone, and I want to talk a lot today about objections that people have so that we can get rid of them, we can squash them. So if you're someone who's thinking you're not even a great writer, or you're someone that wouldn't consider yourself a great writer, and that you are uh, don't like writing, then it doesn't matter. It's absolutely possible to be a successful author. I am someone who does not like writing. I'm not really even a fan of reading. And I'm more of an auditory learner. That's really where I find my preferences. And maybe some of you are like that as well, that you're more of an auditory kind of learner. So if you're someone who doesn't like writing, that's okay, because we've got solutions for that. Because I can show you how to get results and uh, how, and I've done that with a number of my clients. And I want to talk about some of those clients right now. Now, these are some of the clients that I've been blessed to serve. These are private clients that I've worked with Neil Donald Walsh, Marianne Williamson, Robin Sharma, Gay Hendricks, Wayne Dyer, Marcy Shimoff, Greg Braden, Richard Carlson, Debbie Ford are just a few of the many clients that I've worked with. And uh, many of these authors, when they approached me to help them, they were already wildly successful but they wanted help with launching their books because what's really important for you to know is that things have changed in the book industry in the publishing industry and in the world, of course, with our internet and how we're using the internet. And now that opportunity for anyone, whether you've been a successful author or not, is there to put your flag in the ground, to put your stamp on this world so that people know who you are. So it's possible you can, you can already be a successful author, or you could be someone who's, absolutely completely unknown and become a very successful author and create a phenomenal uh, New York Times bestseller. So let's look at some people and I'm going to bring on Colleen and Mick just in a moment. But PZ Ling is one of the lovely, 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 lovely women that I've been very blessed to work with. She wrote a book called The Wisdom Seeker. And she had a desire to write this book for quite some time. I mean, she came from an extremely challenging a part of the world. She was there in the Khmer Rouge, like she went through some, so the whole challenges of watching horrific things occur in her life and, and move to another country where she didn't speak the language. And so she wrote a book called The Wisdom Seeker, Finding the Seed of Advantage in the Khmer Rouge. And she really didn't know what to do when she got the idea to write the book and really wanted some guidance. And she had reached out to me. We did work together. She took my program as well. And, and I did some private mentoring with her. 
And uh, she had said, she sent me this note actually on Skype one day. She said, you know, when I look back, I had no idea what to do besides having that desire to write my book. And she said, I tried a number of times, but I just couldn't write past five pages. And now she's not only written past five pages, she got her fabulous book done and it's a great book. And she made it an international bestseller and now calls herself an international bestselling author. And I want you to think about that for a moment. I want to think about you. I want to think about, you know, even that desire. Let's say you're someone that has that desire within you and you've been thinking about writing a book. I want you to think about what it would feel like to actually complete that book bring it out to the world and you become an international best-selling author and those words international best-selling author becomes part of your signature it goes on your business card it goes on your website you're introduced somewhere and your friend says to you, and here's my friend and she is a new york times best-selling author or an international best-selling author it feels pretty cool right like if you just imagine that and think about that for a moment so I want you to think about that. Like I work with this woman named Elle Newmark and Elle's a great story. A lot of people love hearing about Elle Newmark's story because Elle had a desire to write. She was a fiction author. And, and I, by the way, I've worked with every kind of author, fiction authors, nonfiction authors, and every genre in between those two categories. And pretty much those are the two categories, fiction or nonfiction. And Elle Newmark wrote a book and she tried to get a publisher, couldn't get a publisher. She got an agent, ended up firing that agent. She got so frustrated with her results that she thought, you know what, I want to get this book out there in the world. I'm just going to take matters into my own hands. So she learned how to effectively market her book following my formula. She took my program, became one of my clients. And she wrote a book called Bones of the Dead. She launched the book, made it a bestseller. And within 24 hours, signed a deal with a, a literary agent and less than two weeks later had a seven figure publishing deal to publish that book, Bones of the Dead, by a company called Simon & Schuster. Pretty big deal. Now that's a very rare scenario. Not everybody's having those situations, but let me tell you what separates L. Newmark from the rest. Number one, she did write a good book. You know, she is a good writer. She was a gifted writer. And that actually is important. However, if you're thinking, well, I'm not a good writer, that's okay too, because I'm going to tell you how to overcome that one. Second thing is she invested in herself. She invested in herself with really learning and understanding what does it take to market my book effectively from someone who had done it. So she took a program. She invested in herself, took my program, and then she followed through right? She did launch her book, did make it a bestseller online, got the attention of several publishers, received a number of different offers, and ultimately created extraordinary results. Now, was that opportunity available to anyone? Absolutely, it's available to anyone. And that's what I want you to really understand is this opportunity is available to anyone. And I really want to invite you to dream big because there's some amazing things that can happen. When you start dreaming big, you invest in yourself and you start taking action. Now, I wanna invite on our call right now a couple special guests. As I mentioned to you, we've got Mick Peterson, who's on the line right now. He's here with us. And I'm gonna bring him on first, and then we're gonna bring on Colleen Ann, who's another author. And Mick's story is absolutely phenomenal. Now, before I switch over and bring him on, Mick took my bestseller program a few years back after he had written a book called Stella and the Timekeepers. It's a fiction book that Mick dreamt up in his mind. He's going to talk about that in a minute. He made it a bestseller. Two weeks later, he was contacted by Oscar and Emmy Award winning Hollywood producer Phil Goldfine out of Hollywood, California, who invited him to Los Angeles. And they have now partnered to create a blockbuster success a film based on Mick's movie. They also have sold the rights to the publisher of the book called The Secret as Simon & Schuster, and they are re-releasing this book with the new name called The Timekeepers in the fall of this year. Now, I want to bring Mick on. We're just going to stop the screen sharing here for a moment, and we are going to bring Mick on to the line. And I'm going to have him share with you a little bit about his story. Okay, Mick, can you unmute your line for me, please? Hi, Peggy. Hi there. All right, great. Well, thank you so much for being here. You know, Mick, I really find that your story inspires others. 
you know, you were in a, a place where, you know, like you didn't have the knowledge and the understanding, you didn't have the following on what is it going to take to be a successful author, but you definitely had the dream. So I want to go back in time, if you will. Let's go back in time. And I want you to share with everyone what was going on for you, kind of like in your mind space of, uh, you know, what am I going to do with this, right? Like, were you feeling overwhelmed? Were you feeling excited? Were you feeling all of the above? Like, what was happening for you when you decided, I'm going to bring this book to the world? Well, so I guess what happened is um, after I had this dream and it was one of those dreams where I was mentally punched in the head and I woke up, um, wow, that's compelling and I want to I, I want to write this down. And I didn't really know what to do with it. I thought about it and thought about it and visited that world all the time for three years. And then I wrote the book. And once the book was out, the first draft was done. I had no idea what to do. So I went to a few editing workshops and I realized I didn't really like editing. And then a good friend of mine who's a writer said, good writing is in the rewriting. So you need to like editing. You need to like rewriting. So I rewrote, rewrote, but I didn't know what to do. And then I went to a Bob Proctor event where I was in, introduced to you. And I remember at Bob Proctor's event, and, and it continues with my study with you. It, how, how come I didn't know about this material? How come I didn't understand who I was and how magnificent I am? Not in a, in a conceited way, but human beings are amazing. We are amazing that we have this, these gifts. We're endowed with these gifts to think these intuitive factors, faculties that we can use. So I didn't know what to do with, with this book. And I found, I met you and you helped me to clarify the vision of what I wanted. And I know what I want and I knew what I wanted, but you were, you ask me that. Well, who? how many people say, what do you really want in your life? What is your life purpose? Well, Peggy, you did that to me. And, and it was like a, uh, another mental slap in the butt, I guess. Is, is, and it, it woke me up. And then it woke me up to the possibilities of what could be. And along this whole journey, what I have found is, well, number one, you're a lot of fun. And <laughs> fun. we like to laugh a lot. And But you also show up. You consistently show up for me. If I feel like... Um, it's not happening. Or if that little doubt has crept into my mind that um, the idea of having an impact globally to billions of people, um, that it won't happen. If that doubt comes into my mind, you say, no, mm -hmm. focus on the vision. And Henry Ford said, obstacles are what pop up when you take your mind off the goal. So I just don't take my mind off the goal. And you keep that, you're like, come on, Mick, stay in line it, in, a, in a really lovely way. I like, very much. That. You know, I love, I love that you do that. And, you know, a lot of people are, are have that understanding of what to do. They just simply do, don't do it. And you did it, right? You decided that even though there's no evidence of how this is all going to happen, there's no evidence of how this book is going to become this series of books, even more like a more than just one book, a multiple series of books, and how this now it's 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 being built as a franchise that's going to be bigger than the whole Harry Potter franchise. Like when when you went to Hollywood to meet with Phil Goldfine, and uh, you guys sat there to discuss taking Stella and the Timekeepers and making it into a movie. What happened? Share with us what happened when when Phil took you out over to the uh, <laughs> to the other part of the 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 park there. Okay, so when I when I say that you are there, you were actually there. You went <laughs> to Universal because you were in LA, I was in LA, and um, so there were four of us that drove over to Universal, you dropped me off, and then Phil, who's a very busy man, he cleared his whole calendar for that day and he gave me a behind the scenes tour uh, through the sound stages, through um, the areas where the they shoot, the back lot where they shoot all the different movies. And he's, in the meantime, he's building this vision with me of what we can create together. And then we go to the executive dining room and I'm looking around like, oh, there's probably somebody famous here. Even though I'm, I'm drowning, I really was treading water like, what is happening here? And he said to me that in 25 years and 200 films that he'd never been given 
or seen a four quadrant project. And I didn't know what that meant, but he said that means that it, uh, it appeals to all demographics, boys, girls, men, and women. And then he said, look around. And so I looked around thinking, oh, maybe Sandra Bullock walked in or something. And I, I didn't see anybody, but he said, welcome to Hollywood royalty. I'm making you the next JK Rowling. And then I, you know, my jaw hit the ground and he said, but truthfully, this is gonna take some time. It could take a decade. Are you willing and patient to allow it to happen? And will you keep showing up? And I said, yes, I will. It's a great question that he asked you there. Now, was there anything like, Mick, when you look at you know, what, what's happened for you, I know sometimes we've had the conversation where you're talking about sometimes it just feels surreal that all this has happened and is happening and continues to happen for you in such a great way. Was there a point, and I know, I know there was, because this happens to everybody, wh where you felt fearful or you felt doubt, like, oh my God, there's like no way this is gonna happen. Like where you got in your own way. What happened in those situations and how did you get out of your own way? It happened a lot and it still happens on occasion, but now it's, it's just a voice in my head that I, I just kind of pat, pat it and say, oh, there, there, you're so cute. Step aside because I've got bigger things to do. Uh, you, I think it, you've helped me tremendously in that I have disregarded not believing in myself and I'm believing in the belief that you have in me. And that goes for Phil Goldfein, that goes for Richard Cohen, my publisher. It goes for um, just all the different people, the experts in their fields, that there must be something to this because big names, big people, experts in their field have um, I've attracted them and they've come to me and we're now a, a team bringing this out into the world. Amazing. So I've had doubt. I get it. Uh, I absolutely am. And I really appreciate you sharing that too, your honesty with that. One more question for you, Mick, and then we're going to go over to Colleen. How has your life changed for the better? since you became an author? The most important thing to remember is that these changes that we're talking about, um, I can now call myself an international best-selling author, and that is permanent. No one can ever take that away. That's like if you win an Olympic gold medal, no one can take that away. That is your accomplishment. So uh, as I was in the middle and the heat of doing all of this, of, of the action. And you know, Peggy, I'm an action taker. I do, I do, I do, I go, I go. And then when I when the dust settled and I could look around, oh my goodness, I am an international best-selling author. And not only that, I get to do what I absolutely love to do, which is to tell stories and to write. That's, that's my passion, that's what I want to do. So uh, my, my life has changed. I'm still straddling two worlds. I'm straddling the world that was that that I used to do and I used to be and I continue to do that and then I'm straddling the I'm, my other foot is in this world of a vision that I created and you helped me to make that vision clear for me so it it's cool because soon my feet that are like this they'll both be in this world of the vision that I created so and it's perfect. I love it Mick that's awesome well we're so good. Like everyone that's listening, I want you to really listen and I, you can go back, you can catch the recording again later. Stay on the call though, because we've got a lot more to, to cover. But you know, what Mick was talking about there, and you're going to hear it woven throughout as a common thread is the belief system that's required and the action that's required to take place. That's what you did. And those that are willing to do that, even if they don't know exactly how this is going to happen or don't have any earthly idea what to do next or what to do first, it's still possible. You got to have the dream. You got to follow through on the dream. Nick, you did. And we're going to be seeing that theme park. We're going to be enjoying your bestsellers. We're going to enjoy the trilogy. And I want everyone to make a note to watch out for timekeepers because it's coming out in the fall this year and it is an extraordinary extraordinary book that i'm certain everyone loves and as phil had mentioned to mick it's a four quadrant book so it's men women children teens men boys girls it's like everybody who's gonna want this book like a harry potter kind of idea only very very unique and one of the unique things about mick's writing 
is he really weaves in the laws of the universe, which is powerful. And anyone that's been in the study of any of the laws of the universe or success principles, you're going to find that inside Mick's book too, which I think makes it even better. So thank you. Thank you, Mick. You're always willing to share, always willing to help. I really appreciate you. Well, thank you, Peggy. I appreciate you. I'm grateful every day that you are in my life. All right, right back at you. All right. Great stuff. Love it. Okay. And you know, what I love about this is like my client's success is my success. I take it very seriously. One of my clients was here yesterday. Actually, we did an all day planning session and, and uh, she said to me, she said, why don't you just retire? And it's like, well, I could if I wanted to, but I don't want to. I love this. Like, I really believe I got more people to help. And speaking of that, we've got a wonderful woman who was blessed to meet actually at a matrix event at the Bob Proctor matrix event. It's the lovely Colleen Ann. And Colleen is an author. <laughs> yeah, let's give her a big round of applause. Colleen is the author of a series of books. She also has a multitasking kind of woman. And uh, I want to share with us, Colleen, I've got a slide actually. I'll show everyone next what your books are so that they can all see them. They're called The Feeling Friends. But Colleen, what was it that made you decide to become an author in the first place? What was the inspiration behind that? Honestly, I I wasn't trying to. <clears throat> Pardon me. I uh, I'm a performer, like you mentioned before, and uh, my daughter had extreme colic, and I ended up writing my first book, Sad Sally, because I spent six months crying with her, and <laughs> and because I'm creative, I had to I knew I had to kind of get it out of me, so I wrote it, but it sat on my computer for like three four years, and I I didn't know what to do with it. I was a singer. So it just sat there and I went to a Bob Proctor event and he said to me, publish your book. And I said, I don't know how to do that. I'm a singer. And he said one word to me. He looked at me and said, learn. Mm. I was like, oh, I can do that. Yeah. Like as though this had never occurred to me before, but it didn't. <laughs> and, <laughs> he, and he pointed over to you and he said, go introduce yourself to that woman and learn. Sign up for her course and do it. And I did. And uh, I was doing a show at the time. I said, I can't work with you until the show closes on September 28th, September 29th, I'm yours. Um, <laughs> but will you work with me kind of thing? And it was the best thing I ever did. Totally. That's awesome. Yeah. I really appreciate it. You know, Colleen, as you're talking, I'm thinking about, I remember back in, it was somewhere around 2002, and I wrote and released three books in a matter of 11 months. And uh, I thought that was a pretty big deal. Actually, one of them I had already written. So I thought that was a pretty big deal, but you did four. <laughs> you did four in less time than that. So <laughs> what do you share with folks? Like what happened that inspired you to write four books and release four books? I, well, I, okay. So I had done Sad Sally and I was so thrilled with the success. I was really happy about it. And I want to get this message into the schools about emotional intelligence and learning how to use emotions instead of, you know, being overwhelmed by them or ignoring them completely. Right. So I started taking Sad Sally to the schools and they said, we love her. Where are the rest of them? And I was like, um, it's, coming. it's September. And I just said it. <laughs> and suddenly I was like, oh, that means I got to like follow through. So I, I wrote my little behind off uh, last summer. I had already written most of it, but I had to get them illustrated and I had to do the storyboards. And so I just, I don't know. I just decided, I decided to do it. I wanted to get them into the school. So I made a decision and said, I'm doing this. And my daughter said, would you release it? Would you release them on my birthday? So we oh. moved the date back a little bit and released them on November 14th, her birthday. How beautiful is that? You know, you just said something. I want everyone to really listen and, and take to heart. You know, what, what did Colleen say? She made a decision, right? She made a decision. And as you know, that's a really important part of success. You know, you mentioned your daughter, Amelia, who's a little cutie patootie. Tell, tell me, how has you becoming an author, how has that impacted her? Honestly, it's so funny you asked that. So I, was, I drove her to school yesterday. And we were in the back seat and, or she, I wasn't in the back seat. She was in the back seat. <laughs> she was driving. She drove me to school. Um, and, right? and she goes, mommy, 
I just, I can't believe you were in the newspaper. I said, why can't you believe it? She goes, no, that's not what I meant. I believe it. I'm just so proud of you, mommy. <laughs> I'm like, thanks, honey. It's, she, is, she is proud of it. And I don't know if it's because the books of, are kind of for her age group, but that's what she wanted to give for her loot bag for um, the birthday party. We gave out books. Oh, that's so yeah. sweet. I, it's, it, it's just been really, she's so proud of it. And she's like, mom, will you sign my book for me? Like, it's when, when Sad Sally first arrived in the house, like I opened the book and I, or I opened the box of books and I looked at it and I kind of melted to the floor and just cried. And she goes, oh. mom, I'm so proud of you. Aww. And I was like, okay, I can't handle this moment, right? <laughs> this is like overwhelmingly awesome. Yeah. Uh, how old is she? She, uh, she's six now. Six. Okay, good. You know, I love that you shared that story. Thank you so much for being so willing. I know how much you love your daughter, even if she had you crying for six months, the first six months of her life. It's amazing <laughs> what it brought about, though, honestly. Like, you never know why you're going through something, right? So, right. Yeah, that's something. But for anyone who's watching, like any parents, you know, Trace is on the, the call right now. He has a seven-month-old son, Luke, and we've got other parents that are on this call. And, you know, I want you to recognize, I want you to really pay attention to this because when you follow through, when you do this, you don't know who you're going to inspire. You know, quite often we create the books, you know, whether they're fiction or nonfiction, to impact somebody else, you know, a reader perhaps, multiple readers, millions of readers in the world. But you never know how it's going to impact your kids and whether it's going to inspire them to do more. And I know, like, I, I have one child as well. I have a son. He's a little bit older than your daughter. <laughs> and he, he is so, like, he, he said those words to me. And not on a lot of occasions, because he's not really a big talker, but he has said those words to me, I'm proud of you, mom. And there are, I don't think there's fewer words that we can hear that just warm our hearts than other than your child saying to you, I'm proud of you. And you will inspire them. You're definitely going to inspire them. Now, you are an international best-selling author, Colleen. Yeah. And I asked Mick, like, how has his life changed, you know, since he's become an international bestselling author and, of course, his book's picked up by a major publishing house and his book's being made into a movie. But how has your life, like, what else has occurred in your life as a result of this? Because I know that for you, for your perspective, is what you learned by taking my program was online marketing, right? Effective marketing of yep. a book. But you also have other areas that you specialize in that you have great passion for. And how has that experience positively moved over to these other areas of your life? Well, it's interesting. It's funny because international bestselling author has nothing to do with the other side of what I do. But the fact that that's now on my business card uh, brings me a certain amount of clout in a business that has nothing to do with this, right? So mm -hmm. I... I teach professionals how to get up on stage and speak and the amount of um uh, people that are aware of that now is is amazing just because of a children's book that i wrote which has you know seemingly no connection you know i'm being flown out for the first time next month which i feel is rather glamorous <laughs> that's pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> and i i believe it has everything to do with with that so someone is paying to fly you to speak at an event they're flying me out to Vancouver, putting me up in the West End. Like, I feel kind of like a Hollywood star a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and I, I believe... Right? Right? Yeah, no, I, I think that that has a lot to do with, with this one little line that I've been able to add to my business card, you know? Amazing. Uh, really cool. It's seemingly uh, not connected, but it's amazing how it's, it's lifted. It's elevated my, my business across the board. It's kind of like one of those bonus surprises that you have sort of certain levels of expectation, right? Like, you know, that if you're pursuing becoming an author, your ultimate outcome is to call yourself an author. If you're pursuing becoming a best-selling author, obviously the outcome is to call yourself a best-selling author. If it's New York times, that's an outcome as well, but you don't, you never know about these other wonderful benefits that are coming along as a result of that. It's like a ripple effect or the gift that just keeps on giving. Yeah, yeah, the amount of people that have like heard of me now, I find that cool. I'm like, oh, you've heard of me. That's a, that's a thing now, right? <laughs> okay. And people are reaching out to me 
as opposed to me reach. I mean, I'm still reaching out to people, but a lot of people are now reaching out to me and I'm like, Oh, I like this. I like how this feels. This is very cool. I love that Colleen. I've got one more question for you. You know, sometimes people will say to me, it's like, okay, well that's fine for that person or it's fine for that person. You know, like they're already well known and, and they just assume and they don't realize that everyone who starts starts from somewhere. And I work with authors at all different levels, whether they're even just thinking about maybe I'll write a book or whether they've written bestsellers in the past. So, so how about sharing with, with the, that, that doubter that's thinking, yeah, well, it's okay for them. You know, they they know exactly because you just mentioned that this is now at a point where people are paying attention to you, like they're aware of you. So, what would you say to that person who's in that place of no one's aware of them, or they don't think anyone's aware of them right now, and they're basically under the radar or not even on the radar whatsoever? I I would say I've totally been there, <laughs> and uh, I I didn't even raise my hand when I was at that conference where I met you. Um, Bob said, if you've written a book, raise your hand. I just sat there <laughs> because I thought, well, he doesn't mean a kid's book. He means this, right? It's amazing how we will discount ourselves and what we've done. Oh, that's not what he meant. Oh, he meant this. Well, I'm not really there. We say all these like things to ourselves that are just garbage. So like what I would say is tell this to be quiet and go with this. Beautiful. This will lead you where you want to go. And this is just going to keep you spinning in the same spot. Absolutely. Perfection. All right. Thank you so much, Colleen. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much, Mick. I appreciate both of you for coming on the call. Mwah. All right, guys, I'll see you in our next, uh, I'll see you Monday, actually, we're going to be together then. All right. Oh, then there's your little Z Zuzu, Zaza, Zaza, Zuzu, <laughs> your puppy. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon. I'm going to go back to the presentation for those of you that are watching. I'm just noticed on the chat box here, lots of people giving uh, wonderful congratulations to both Colleen and to Mick. You are inspiring. You're continuing to inspire others. Thank you so much. You inspire me as well. Love you guys. Okay, I'll see you guys a little bit later. Okay, we're gonna go back to our screen share because here's what I want you to know. Just before we go over there, we just heard from Mick Peterson, who's the author of a book called Stella and the Timekeepers, soon to be released, re-released, called Timekeepers, which I highly recommend you watch for that book. And it's a nonfiction book. We have Colleen Ann, who's written The Feeling Friends, Sad Sally, Happy Hannah, uh, Mad Michael. I'll show you her friends in a minute so that you can see who they are. Also, highly recommend those books. It's funny, I was telling Colleen at Christmas time, we're over at a friend's place and their grandchild was there. And the grandchild had all these toys all over the floor. And what was on the floor was a copy of Sad Sally, Colleen's book. And it's like, wow, that was like, hey, that's my client's book. And, and uh, they said, yeah, you know, we remember when you were promoting it and we decided to buy a copy. You just never know where that book's going to land. But why I wanted to mention that we just heard from Mick and we heard from Colleen, a nonfiction or a fiction author and a children's book author, is that I want you to get out of your own way. Suspend any disbelief because what I'm talking about applies to any book. And I was telling some friends yesterday that one of, uh, one of the books that I heard about many years ago, which actually had a wide audience, was a book called Knitting with Dog Hair. Can you imagine like, who would want to knit a sweater with their dog hair? But apparently people do. So if you even have a book idea on some bizarre topic, well, just listen up because I want to talk to you a little bit more about what's involved in this. So let's go back to the presentation. I'm going to walk you over here. And that's Colleen's. There's Colleen's books. We have we have Sad Sally, Mad Michael, Nervous Nelly, Happy Hannah. And you've just heard from her. I mean, this was just something that was, you know, an idea in her mind. No one in the world knew that she even had books. She, and in a seminar, she just heard, you know, the idea, you know, follow your heart. Bob Proctor suggested to her, learn, learn. And what did she do? She did. And now, international best-selling author, she shared with you, she's getting invites to speak all over the place. Okay, another wonderful author and a lovely woman that I'm so blessed to know is a lady by the name of Banafshe Akalagi. And I apologize if I'm not saying her name properly, but she would get these messages that would almost come through her. And when I met her, she was like, what do I do with these? And she said, I, you know, people have told me to put them into a book. I said, that's a beautiful idea. And that is exactly what she did. Not knowing what to do, she followed the guidance. She wrote her book called Beautiful Reminders Anew and released it and made it a bestseller. And now, even though she is an attorney by 
career. She is also an international best-selling author, and it definitely helps the career. Robin Sharma was someone who had released a book called The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. And when he released the book that followed that called The Saint, The Surfer, and The CEO, he simply wasn't getting results. So he asked for my help, and I helped him get that book right to the number one book in the world. Number one, not in a category, number one in the world on Amazon.com. And this, the reason why I want to share Robin's example with you is that this is, it just really speaks to the power of knowing what to do. The formula that I use and that I teach authors to follow is a formula to make any book a bestseller, regardless of where that book happens to be. So if you're someone who has a book that's already been released, it's been out in the market for a while, it's not selling, whether it's a book that was written five years ago, 10 years ago, well, you can still make that book a bestseller. So for those of you authors that are, you know, that have already been there, written their books, maybe haven't done anything with it yet, there's still hope. It doesn't matter if the book was released a long time ago, you can still do it. Now, this is a great example by an author, a young guy by the name of Destin Gregory, who was five years old when he wrote a book with the help of his dad, a book called The Day I Met Bob. And it's written from a five-year-old's perspective, Destin's perspective on how he set a goal to meet Bob Proctor and he achieved it. And what a delightful book this is. And his dad, Eric, took my program as well and between Eric and with the help of his son, they made that book a bestseller. Now, can you imagine Destin going to school? Now, by the time he released his book, you know, he might have been six, you know, maybe on his way to seven. Could you imagine a little six, seven year old? Think about Amelia, right? Think about Colleen's daughter going to school and saying, Oh, I'm an international best selling author. Can you imagine? You probably have all the other children going, What? But it would definitely, it definitely inspire the teachers, I'm sure. But the reason why I mentioned that one is because sometimes people think, I can't write a book. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm not educated. I'm not an expert. Like, who am I? Anybody can write a book. And I find that Destin's example, Destin's story is truly inspiring for others to recognize that, hey, here's a five-year-old that's written a book. And if a five-year-old could do it, well, anybody can do it, right? Anybody can do it. So I think that's a pretty cool story. And maybe it's inspiring you right now as you're listening to this. Now, here's another kind of completely on the other end of the spectrum kind of book. This is a book that was written by a lady by the name of Carol Abramson, who wrote a book called Not Three, But 21 the investor relations audiences, every CEO and CFO who seriously audiences every C attracting Wall Street interest must understand. And she used this book rather than a book to make herself a best-selling author or a book to bring out to the world to you know just sell copies. She used it as a lead generator, as a business tool. You see, I want you to understand this. When you write your book, the fact that your name goes on a cover, whether it's a book that's electronic only, in other words, a PDF book, or whether it's a book that you are actually putting into print form and releasing to the world, either soft cover, hard cover. As soon as you do that, there's an instant credibility that occurs. People look at your name, they look at your book and think, wow, that person must have an understanding. They must be an expert. They must know what they're talking about. And so I want you to think about that, how that can impact you as well. So in Carol's case, she created this book, gave away, she printed 250 copies, gave away those copies. Out of that, 100 clients hired her and she generated $2 million in consulting fees. Like that's a huge return on her investment of time, energy, and whatever money she put into actually producing that book. It's extraordinary. So I want to help you create some results as well. So we're going to get into some practical and tactical things that can be done as we're going through this. But I really need your attention for this. So this cute little cartoon says, studies say people are losing their ability to focus because of all the digital distractions. Sorry, what? Hold on. What were you saying? I don't know, probably wasn't important. So if your phone is on or you've got Facebook open right now, shut it down, shut it down. Your future 
your success, your life is worth you giving this your undivided attention. So do, do so. Okay, so if you're a tire kicker, if you're somebody who's, you know, maybe casually thinks about doing things but doesn't really do anything, then this is probably not for you. Because I do want to talk about what work is involved from the perspective of completing your book and from the perspective of making your book a bestseller. So if you're someone who's never taken action, doesn't likely take action, isn't interested in investing themselves, aren't interested in improvement in your life, then you're probably not in the right place. But I suspect that the folks that are on this call are definitely in the right place. So what I'm about to share with you can definitely impact you. I also want you to understand the following. As I'm walking through the next series of slides, <coughs> excuse me, and as I'm guiding you through this, even if you are already an author, because I know we've got some folks that are that are on this uh, <laughs> that are on this call. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm just gonna take a little drink of water. That have already written their books. We even have some people on here. I noticed right now that have actually already made their books bestsellers. I noticed that Pashmina's on the call right now. She's taken my program and made two of her books, maybe more for all I know. She's prolific, that woman. She's already made her books bestsellers. But still listen in. You know, here's what I absolutely know to be true. 40 years ago, I started a study by Proctor. That opened up my consciousness to a whole new idea, a whole new thinking way of life. And that changed my life for the better and continues to do and has and will for the rest of my life. So 40 years later, here I am. I am a student. I will watch sessions. I'll watch classes over and over and over again. Why? Because I'm, I'm hungry for learning. I know that the more I learn, the more I understand, the more I apply, the better life gets. And that's really what we're talking about here right now, right? We're talking about making your life better. I want to help you improve your life. And if it can help improve other people's lives or benefit someone else in some way, then it's a bonus, right? It's an absolute bonus. So I'm delighted that you're all here. Hey, thanks, Jackie G. I got some water right here. I'm all good. I'm happy that you're here because we're going to get into some exciting stuff. So if you're ready to step forward, I want to know that you're coachable. Are you somebody who is maybe the same mindset that I am, very open to learning, absolutely committed to investment, love taking chances, love taking action, love moving forward. Is that you? Just type in the in the little chat box. For those of you that are connected to the chat box, just type in, hell yeah, Peggy, or you better believe it, babe, or something like that, or just a simple yes would work as well. You can just type in that little chat box. I want to know, is that is that who you are? Like, I'm absolutely that, you know, absolutely that person. And I know, like, when we look at people that are getting results, and I love studying success. I love reading about success. Okay, Collins just said, oh, it went right off my screen. Hold on here a second. Collins said, I'm working on writing my first book. Would this program work for me since I don't have anything to market? Yeah, absolutely, Colin, the program. Book writers for the book writers program would definitely work for you. Whether you've written your book or whether you have whether you've written your book or haven't written your book, the program is absolutely for you. And I'm going to explain why a little bit more. So thank you, Alicia, Colin, Pashmina, Marty, Michelle, and everybody else. Trace, <laughs> awesome, Lynn, and Swerden. I'm not sure that's a first name or a last name. Colin, did I mention that? All right, great, guys. I really appreciate you. Okay, let's dive into some more cool stuff. Let's, let's get rid of some things that are in the room. Now they call these elephants in the room. Some common objections from new authors. Hey, creative 999, fully on board. Love it. Okay. I need a plan. Absolutely, Alicia, I can help you with the plan to take it all the way to the top and beyond. It's like Buzz Lightyear to infinity and beyond. That's what we're here to share with you and to guide you to create in your life. So some of the, <laughs> thanks Wafa. So some of the common objections that authors have, and we already talked about this one, right? Maybe some of you have this as well. So, and like, I'm not a good writer. That's me, all right? That was me. I mean, that really was one of the things that came into my mind, but I thought, ah, to heck with it. We don't have to be a good writer. We just need to find a good editor. So throw that one out in the garbage because that is absolutely not, not necessary. 
English is not my first language. I work with authors all over this globe, everywhere, from every country on every corner of the planet I've been working with. And English is not their first language. But I obviously speak English. I teach in English, even though my books are in 37 languages. It doesn't have to be English as your first language. I don't have a lot of money. Well, that's a negative belief that's going to prevent you from doing a whole lot of things. So I would suggest you throw that one out in the garbage in a big hurry. There's an abundance of money in the universe. It's like, I love it when Bob says, if someone wants something, money is never an issue. And that is the truth. If, and you're certain you've had that experience in your life where you decided you're going to get something and you wanted something and you just made it happen. Hell, I've done that many, many different times. So throw that one in the garbage because it's just something that's in your way. You don't live in the United States. Well, you know what? I don't live in the United States. I live in Canada. You don't have to live in the United States to be a best-selling author. You don't have to live in the United States to be a New York Times best-selling author. And, uh, and I explain all of that and how to create it during my program as well. So, all right, super. So let's see. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Power of Beauty says, is it really happening? I believe in miracles. Absolutely. And you got to believe in those miracles because they're possible. I'm honestly a bit scared or skeptical. Totally understand that. But if that's just something that's in your way, it's like the fear's there, that's okay. Like fear is a very common emotion. And it's not that we're not going to have fear. We very likely will have fear. We just need to know how to manage it, right? And to not allow that fear to block us, to keep us in the way or not allow us to get to where we want to go. Skepticism, you know, a little healthy dose of skepticism can be very powerful as well. And let me talk about that one for a moment. There are a truckload of people that are out there online trying to flog and promote their programs. And they have not created the success in their own life. They're what's called a charlatan. And you can tell whether someone is actually a honest person, whether they actually are authentic by how you feel, right? Use your intuitive guide to be a factor. That's one way. Another way is look at results. Bob Proctor often will say is by their fruits, you will know them. What does he mean by that? Look at people's results. If you're looking to invest in somebody's program or work with somebody, just take a look at their results. If there's someone that's achieved what you're looking to achieve or something similar to what you're achieved, then bam, you know they've got to have the goods, right? If you don't know where to begin, that's okay too. I can show you exactly where to begin. One of the things that Colleen had said, she talked about making a decision, right? It's the same thing with Mick. He made a decision. He had dreamt his book up. It was something that just came to him actually through a dream and he decided to write the book. You've got to make a decision. That's a great place to begin. You know, sometimes people will say to me, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to write a book. They've made a decision to write the book. What do I do next? Well, when would you like to have your book done? That's another great idea. Make a decision on when you're going to complete. But the starting point of deciding you're going to be a New York Times bestselling author or an Amazon best-selling author comes with the decision. Now, I noticed that uh, Trace put a message here from Marty on the chat box that says, Peggy's going to show you how to make how to make the marketing sales easy. Okay, so I'm going to show that as well. We're definitely going to get into that. So hang in there, guys. I have a lot of great content, more content to go over for you uh, in this presentation. So you might be thinking, I don't even know where to start and how can I make a, I make a decision? Well, that's easy because I can show you where to start. I can show you exactly what to do. It's like Warner Von Brown was asked, or JFK asked Warner Von Brown, what would it take to put a man on the moon by the end of the century? And Von Braun said, the will to do it. It's five words. And Bob Proctor talks about this all the time. Good news, here's the good news. Creating a bestseller is way easier than putting a man on the moon. So I wanted you to get excited about that. You see, unknowing like being in a place called ignorance is not a great place to be and i know because i've been there and i want to talk a little bit we're going to go back in time in a, in a minute and i want to talk about where i was at the point after i had written my book and what i needed to do so i had the will to do it so if you have the will to do it then you've got the ability to do it you've absolutely got the ability you see when i wrote my book on being the creator of your destiny uh, as I said earlier, I don't like writing and I'm not a great writer. I am not a great writer, but I have the desire to write the book. 
and I had a desire to become a New York Times bestselling author. So that's where I started claiming it, right? I claimed it to the world. I am so happy and grateful now that I am a New York Times bestselling author with books all over the world, sold all over the world, translated into multiple languages. So it starts by claiming it. All right, I'm going to make a decision. That's going to be my objective. And you write it down, right? You write it down. This is what I intend to create. And then you see it in your mind's eye. Well, how do you see that in your mind's eye? Well, here's what I did. I would take the cover of my books whenever I had released the book and I would put bestseller emblems on them. And I would take them off other real bestsellers and I would use that as a visual so I could see it, so I could connect to what does it feel like to actually have that in my life. That's valuable. It's a valuable manifestation technique, visualization. Another thing that I did was I went and looked at the New York Times bestseller list and I copied it and I modified it by putting my name on there and then I was and then printed copies and then I would look at a list, the New York Times bestseller list and what would I see? My name on the list. It's like Bob says, if you hold it in your mind, you'll hold it in your hand. So I held that vision in my mind and got on with the work, right? Yes, you can see it in your mind and yes, you will hold it in your hand, but you absolutely must get on with the work. I love what Trace wrote here. He said, Tina, love what you're doing. You're rooted in and driven by your purpose. You see, that's a really important part that Trace mentioned here is to connect it to your passion. You see, I wrote a book on being the creator of your destiny because I was very passionate about personal development. Personal development had changed my life in every way. When I think back to who I was before I even got into personal development, I was a miserable, miserable woman. And I was suicidal. Like I seriously remember the day sitting on a park bench thinking about how am I going to end it? And the reason, the thing that stopped me from moving forward on that was thinking about how it would hurt my mom. And I didn't want to hurt my mom. But I went, ended up going to a Bob Proctor seminar and Bob Proctor quoted Vernon Howard and he said, you cannot escape from a prison unless you know you're in one. I was in a mental prison. I was all caught up and consumed and I thought it was everyone else's fault that my life was miserable. And it wasn't until I realized that, oh my goodness, I need to take responsibility. And I got on with the work and it took a while to really change those paradigms. It was a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of time that it took to change those paradigms. So I recognize that success is not that complicated when you understand it at a layman's terms, when it's not complicated, when you can know, when you know what to do to actually make those positive changes in your life. That's what's really, really valuable. So what will happen when you bring your book out to the world? We talked about the, the pride that Colleen's daughter, Amelia, felt when she saw her mom in the newspaper, when she saw her mom become a best-selling author. Well, that's a benefit for sure. But it's an instant credibility to see your name or to have your name on a book. It has the potential to multiply your income. I did a webinar one time on the multiple ways that you can earn money just from your book, never mind the other ways that you can make money extending beyond your book or extending beyond your area of expertise. It also allows you to contribute to society in a positive way. You know how earlier Colleen was talking about getting her books in schools? I love that vision. We've had a lot of conversations around having Sad Sally and the Feeling Friends be introduced into books or into schools. I remember you know, people telling me that my book would become part of a book club where people would be studying it and they'd be buying cases of the book. Wow, those are the kinds of things that you want to create for your vision of what you're seeing for your book. And of course, it leaves a legacy. Like Wayne Dyer is a client that I was blessed to work with. Debbie Ford was a client that I was blessed to work with. Uh, Richard Carlson, another client, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, that I was blessed to work with. All three of those people are no longer on the earthly plane, right? They've passed on, but their legacy lives on. Their legacy lives on with their books. On my desk here in my office, I have copies of books. Dr. Joseph Murphy, uh, Wendell, uh, Wendell Holmes, um, Neville Goddard. 
on my bookshelves, I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books. It's legacy stuff. Many of the authors aren't even on the planet anymore. So you leave your legacy. Also, it opened floodgates. Remember how Colleen had talked about, about being invited to go speak at a conference out west and that she's being flown in, they're paying for her hotel. You don't know what could happen. I mean, these are just an example. Some of the examples are a senior citizen discount. <laughs> Marty, you're so cute. I love that. Uh, Marty, no, there's no senior citizen discount. I love that. What a cute, cute idea. You're so adorable. Okay. The other thing to think about, and I teach this as well. I teach this to my clients, like the multiple sources of income. This is the quite often the thing, like the possibilities and the opportunities sometimes shocks people on what's possible to just take either ideas from books and create programs or create retreats or create webinar series or do a membership program or create other products or services or even going beyond, you know, your book. Like as, as an example, Colleen is a children's book author. But she also learned through my program on how to effectively market. So what did she do? She created a program called the Epic System, which is based on performance, based on speaking on stage, based on having the confidence. Because as you heard her say, she was a performer and a very good one. So she had a lot of expertise and understanding in that. So was her program in alignment with the feeling friends? No. But she's looking at releasing some other things, other multiple resources that are in alignment with that. I've released many different types of programs in different genres, in the marketing genre, in the author category, in the self-help, in the money, uh, goal achievement, in financial prosperity ideas. I've done live events and, and created products and programs. And, and so you never know. And as I mentioned earlier, and I'm not trying to brag, but there's huge opportunity. I have lots of friends that are generating hundreds of thousands of dollars and clients generating hundreds of thousands, clients generating millions of dollars, multi-millions of dollars. You see, the internet now gives all of us, like you're on this call right here, right now. I'm here in Ottawa. You're somewhere else in the world. There's different time zones. I know for Jackie G, it's probably the middle of the night for her and she's on the call from New Zealand. And you can reach anyone anywhere, 7 billion people online. It's a trillion dollar industry. And do you know what one of the top selling things is online? Do you know what it is? It's information. So if this is a trillion dollar industry, who has that, right? And information can be delivered in a number of different ways. It can be delivered in what we're looking at right here on the screen through webinars and coaching and live events and retreats and courses and online information, certification. All right, this is cool. <coughs> <clears throat> All right, cool. I like that. So creative 999 says for those being in question of the dollars, the money focus on awareness questions more towards what is desired. Like how does it get any better than this? Or what else is possible? And why am I so lucky to be earning all this money? I mean, those are great questions to ask yourself. But when we look at, you know, the possibilities, and there's so many different possibilities, lots of things that you can go. And I, you know, I also want to share with you the, the, the following truth. I am not a technically inclined person. I you know, have enough of an understanding to create success online and bring in some resources. I mentioned Trace earlier, he's on my team. But where do you start? Like how do you start with all of this? Well, you gotta start by just taking one step or they say one bite at a time. That's how you eat an elephant. You eat an elephant one bite at a time. All right, that's how you do it. You just take one step, one step in the right direction. Like I think back before I was a a, uh, a successful author, you know, I was a single mom. I had consumed a bunch of debt. I didn't have a really great attitude, but I certainly had that desire to change my life. Now I wouldn't say bad attitude. My attitude was definitely much better. But when I had become an author, I really didn't know what the heck I was doing, and I had to seek out and get the proper help. From someone who I know could really, really help me with that. Oh, it looks like Dr. Yusi's on the phone, and Dr. Yusi's a graduate of my program with a best-selling book on his uh, and his credentials as well. He's from the Canary Islands. It's a book that is a phenomenal book, Dr. Yusi. If you want to type in the name of your book there, so everyone can see it, that would be wonderful. I really, really appreciate that. But now, like now, I have, as you saw earlier, thirteen books, eighty-seven countries. 37 different languages or 83 countries and, and 37 different languages. And I live an amazing life. I like this happily married grandma. Now I'm not happily married to my 
my grandson. I'm happily married to my husband, didn't he? But I am a happily married woman, and I have a grandson who I love and appreciate and adore, and I live an extraordinary life. And as I said earlier, I could retire now. I have no desire to retire. I love what I'm doing, and I want to help you. I want to help you get better results. I want you to help improve the quality of your life, help improve people's mindsets as well. But here's what I've discovered. I've discovered a repeatable formula that once you understand it and you implement it, you can create phenomenal success. I mentioned Dr. Yusi a little while ago, and his book is called Transforming Vibes, Transforming Lives. And Dr. Yusi was a medical doctor. He's also a mathematician. He's a brilliant guy and a wonderful human being with a big heart. And that repeatable formula, yes, he made his book Transforming Vibes, Transforming Lives, an international bestseller book, but he's also used it to release other products and services as well. And that's what I like about it. So the big takeaway, let's look at some action steps. I want to talk to you about getting that book done, and I want to share with you how to make it a bestseller as well. We're going to talk about that as well. Okay, so let's look at three action steps, exact steps that you can take to make your book a bestseller. All right, so if you haven't been taking notes and you haven't been getting inspired, well, get ready because we're going to take it to a whole new level right here, right now. Step one, you write your book. Now, I've written a number of my own books, and as I said, when, I, when we first started, I've also had writers write my books, ghostwriters write my books. I've also recorded content and have those put into books. But the very, 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 very first book that I wrote called On Being the Creator of Your Destiny, I wrote it in a period of a month. So you write the book, and then you publish your book. Now, you can either find a publisher or you self-publish your book. And then you bring it out to the world by making it a bestseller. Now, the speed at which all of this occurs is going to be up to two things. It's going to be determined by two things. One, what do you know? Like if you understand what's required, and I can teach you that. And then, of course, what you do. So what you know and what you do. So which step in all of this is the most important step of them all? Which one do you think it is? I just want to ask you, which step do you think is the most important? Step one write your book, step two, publish your book, or step three, market your book and make it a bestseller. So type in little chat box here, okay? I wanna know, what do you think it is? Which one, which step do you think is the most important of them all? All right, after what you know, okay. Uh, guest 4034 says, my book is self-management to reveal and operate your inner strengths. I love it. Writing is most important, says Donna. Tarek says, step three. All right, step one, says Courtney. Alicia says, market, make it a bestseller. Susan says, step three. Jackie says, step three. Lorraine says, step three. Pashmina, an already existing bestseller, step three. And Dr. UC said all the steps, but especially step three. Thank you for that. Lynn says, write the book, the first action step. Cool. All right, guys. Well, it is step three. Now, of course, you need to write the book first. So yeah, you guys are right. Those that said write the book, it's true. You need to write the book and you got to bring it out. But step three, and the greatest lesson that I learned when I first became an author, which I've probably shared with you before, if you've ever been to any of my events or any of my webinars, is that when an author has complete, completed their book, in other words, written their book and brought it out to the world, 5% of their job is done. 95% is the marketing. All right, 95% is the marketing. Okay, now guys, stay with me. I know we're, we've gone beyond the hour already. I still have a lot of great content to go over with you. So stick with me because I want to make sure you guys are loaded up with lots of great stuff here today. So when you follow this advice, it's fun, it's easy. Now results are predictable and you can move quickly. And that's something I love. Listen, I love getting results and I want stuff to happen, bam, bam, bam. And if you're like me and you want things to happen fast, well, you are absolutely in the right place. But we gotta tap into that mental faculty called our imagination. Remember we talked about that earlier and that's exactly what I did with my very first book is I tapped in the imagination. I wanted to see the results in advance. So what would your life be like? Just play with this for a moment. I wanna think about your life. What's your life gonna be like? when you're a best-selling author. And maybe, maybe that goal that you set for yourself is a New York Times best-selling author. Like, how is that gonna impact your life? How's that gonna impact your family? How's that gonna impact how you feel about yourself? How's that gonna impact your business? 
or career, your money situation, just have fun with that, play with that. What would your life be like? And then imagine actually sitting down and getting that book done, like writing that book. It starts by sitting down, following some advice, taking the, the program that I'm offering, the book writers program. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then seeing other people enjoy your book. Like what a delight. I remember one time being in the Bay Shore shopping mall right here in Ottawa. And I was there and I was shopping. I was with my husband and we're walking through the mall. And all of a sudden I stopped in my tracks. There was a guy sitting on a, par a bench. There was a bench right in the middle of the mall and he was reading my book. And I stopped in my tracks and my husband's like, what are you doing? And I said, look. And he looked over at the guy and he could see this guy reading my book. And he's like, wow, that's pretty cool. And the guy looked up because he saw us, you know, probably felt us staring at him. And he's looking at us with this weird look on his face like, what do you want? You know, I think we were annoying him to some degree. And I said to him, I said, you're reading my book. And then he became even more annoyed. He's like, I'm reading my book. I just bought it. And I said, no, 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 I'm the author. He's like, what? <laughs> that was so cool to walk through a mall and to see somebody else reading your book. I've had that happen on an airplane. I got on an airplane one time and I was heading to my seat and I'm always sitting in first class. I don't really have a lot of rows to go by, but the guy in the first row was reading my book and it was like, whoa, that's so freaky. Like you got my book. And he's like, huh? And I said, I wrote that. He's like, oh my goodness, could you autograph it for me? I mean, that's a pretty cool experience. And just imagine your book in the hands of millions of people all over the world. Like, wow, how extraordinary that can be. Or imagine money in your bank accounts, right? Just seeing your bank account, seeing the dollars pouring in every day and having that delight to go online and open up your bank account and see it getting full and full and full and full and <laughs> uh, so exciting. And imagine being guided, having that mentor that can walk you through every step of the way. That's me. All right, so let's start in order. One, you write the book. So let's look at that, writing the book. How do you write the book? Well, here's an option. You could sit down, and now for those of you that are on this call that are considering writing your book, or those of you that are on this call that have already written your book, I might entertain some of these ideas as well. Because what I'm about to talk to you about methodologies of getting your book done. So here's one. You could write one page per day. And if you did that for a year, you'd have 365 pages. Now, it's pretty easy to do. But you may find that once you sit down and you start writing, you'll get more than just a page done. You might be able to get a few pages done. Let's say you sat down and started writing every day for a month for 30 days, and you actually wrote, I don't know, five pages a day. You could have a 150-page book done in a matter of 30 days. Absolutely, it can be done. It's just breaking it down, right? You set the deadline, you break it down, you get on with the work. Another very effective way, if you're someone who doesn't like writing, and remember, that's what I said, that's who I am. I don't like writing. I'll do it, but it's not my favorite thing to do, is to speak into a voice recorder of some sort and then have that transcribed. So that's easy to do. And you can do it either by teaching content, if you're someone who likes to speak or someone who likes to teach, or you can just record into a video, a voice recorder and have it done. Or you could hire a ghostwriter is another way. And a ghostwriter are people that are hired. Now, keep in mind this. Now, I really wanna pause here for a moment. I want you to remember this. 5% of an author's responsibility is getting their book done, all right? 95% is the marketing. So I often will caution people before they hire a ghostwriter. Not, not everybody needs a ghostwriter. It's not necessary, unless you got a lot of money we want to part with. But writing is not that difficult. If you can have a, a conversation, if you can communicate with somebody in the English language, you can write. Even if your writing's not great, that's okay, because you're going to have it edited. All right, so step one, how to write your book. One, you can do it in a week, you can do it in a month, you can do it in a year, it's really up to you. Now, I've written a book in a weekend, and most of the writing in that weekend occurred on the Sunday, and so I've done it. And I remember deciding I was gonna write a book in a weekend, and not knowing if I was gonna be able to do it, but I got on with the work, and I managed to accomplish it. So could you do that? Does the system, Marty says, work for fiction and nonfiction? Absolutely, absolutely. If that's not clear enough, please allow me to stress that. What I teach works for any book 
that has any audience, all right, any kind of book. So yeah, absolutely. Now you remember that if you are writing a book, your editor is your best friend, and it can be very inexpensive. The most I've ever paid an editor is $1,500, but I had that editor do some very serious heavy editing and add content. But if you find a good editor, and I have recommendations for that, I have resources for that, they can become your best friend and they're going to make your book look amazing and read amazingly well. That's what editors do. Now, step two, you've got a couple different options there. One, you could attempt to secure a traditional publisher, and I teach all of that, by the way. Uh, I teach all of that. What constitutes one page? I'm talking about like a Word document, guess 4113, <laughs> like a Word document with about, I don't know, 700 words would be about one page. So a traditional publisher, I teach all of this. If you want to do that, I talk about what's happening in the industry, how to, how to get an agent, what publishers are looking for, what they're not interested in. All of that. So it is an option, and there's some benefits and there's some challenges. Now, I also suggest self publishing, and that can be done through hybrid publisher. My sister runs a hybrid publisher called Hasmark Publishing, and Pashmina wrote, uh, I've noticed you made a comment about Judy from Hasmark. That's my sister's company, Judy at Hasmark. I recommend them. I talk about what services they can do. Pashmina was just mentioning that many positive things have happened in her life as well because she's made her book a bestseller. Anyway, so you can self-publish. Pashmina self-published her books, and so did Dr. Yusi, and so did Mick, and so did Colleen, and so did I in many cases. And of course, you can use a company like CreateSpace, or you can have it even be easier for you, and that is by using a company like Hasmark Services. And then, of course, step three is market your book and make it a bestseller. And I want to show you some real examples here, okay? I want to show you some live examples on how to do that. And what I love about this, and I think you're going to love this as well, is that it can be done online. So whether you're in Thailand, whether you're in Ireland, whether you're in, in New Zealand, whether you're in South Dakota, it doesn't matter where you are because you can reach people on the Internet. So 100% online. You can do some offline things too. I do talk about that. But an online formula would look something like this, where you have a special offer, and I talk about what that special offer would look like, the in, infinite details, like the, the finite details, not the infinite, the finite details of what's involved in all of that, getting your book up and available on Amazon.com, how to actually make it a bestseller, and how do you deal with the clients, and how do you get the leads, and how do you get the eyeballs, how do you get the traffic, and of course, making your book a bestseller. It's a very simple campaign strategy, but there's so many specific parts of this strategy that must be in place in order to make it a success. And so I get into all of the details of that. Now let's look at a campaign that actually ran this week. And this is a wonderful client, a wonderful man by the name of Tom Ramsey, who wrote a book called Slaying the Giants, the ABCs to Stop, Bully, Stop a Bully. And bullying is a big problem in the marketplace. And he's in a, a fifth degree master belt, master black belt. Um, a, he's achieved that. He's also an international best selling author. He created a special offer page following my formula and launched his book, made it a bestseller, and had very simple instructions. And this is just one of the examples that I'm sharing with you of many of the clients that I work with that have made their books bestsellers by following the simple formula. And of course, people go to Amazon, they buy his book, made him a bestseller. I mean, he's pretty darn excited about that. But more importantly, that book, Slaying the Giants, is now out there in the hands of people that have been using it and benefiting from it over and over again. What I also love about Tom Ramsey's uh, book is that that book, as you can see, if you're looking at the screen, was released on Halloween last year on October 27th, or October 31st, pardon me. And he made it a bestseller back then. He's just made it a bestseller again. It's a proven formula that you can repeat, repeat. Okay, L Lainey says, have you answered this? What if you know what you want to write, but you do not know how to express it to your audience? Like if you want to write a kid's book, but you're not sure to entice your audience to actually love the book. All right, great question, Lainey. What I would suggest is you've got to like trust your inner guidance, number one. Like really trust because if you're being inspired to write this, if you've been thinking about writing this, then very likely within you is the idea behind it, right? So you got to really trust that. It's almost like a, a matter of getting quiet and really allowing that message to flow. 
okay allowing that message to flow another thing that you may want to do and this is something that I've done before I actually got into the writing process I started to read some of the classics meaning I would pick up big 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 successful books and I would start reading it just to get into a flow and a momentum of how that book was structured because sometimes other books can inspire you to get to work on yours so I love that you're asking that question Lainey so that's great okay so then Tom Ramsey he had to register to get your bonuses I mean he, all of this was all done beautifully and he made his book a bestseller now every one of you everyone that's on this call right now has the potential to be a huge success everyone regardless of who you are if you're listening to me right now and you're understanding the English language you can absolutely do this all right you can do this and now is the time now's the time so you can do this I want you to keep calm this is not rocket science we're not talking about putting a man on the moon you just got to follow the steps so step one you write the book step two you publish it or self publish it and then step three you market and make it a bestseller now one of my books a book that I wrote a number of years ago called the millionaire author which is now called by the way I changed the name of this book and I gave you guys a copy it's called the prosperous author I just changed the name slightly because somebody else one of my clients actually released a book by the same title oddly enough anyways this book was a book that I created within a period of one week by taking all the recordings from a program that I delivered by the same name and then working with an editor to modify the contents of the book and I decided within a matter of a couple of days to make the book a bestseller publish it and make it a bestseller and I did it in a matter of days now why do I share that with you because once you know how to do this to make your book to get your book done to bring it out to the world to make it a bestseller you can do it again and again and again and that is pretty powerful all right so question number one can you fog a mirror now that may seem absolutely ridiculous or maybe even a little bit overly simplistic but this is what I want you to know you can fog a mirror I know the answer to that question you can definitely fog a mirror if you can fog a mirror you can do this like the only one in your way is you all of those objections need to get out of your mind space they need to be gone 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 because you absolutely have the potential to create this kind of success and beyond number two question are you willing to follow a few simple instructions if you are great because I like to keep things ultra simple easy to apply easy to understand and do you want to help people like do you really want to bring your book out like if you're thinking of writing a book fiction or nonfiction then you obviously want to bring it out to the world you want to either entertain somebody or you want to inspire somebody or you want to educate somebody so if you're looking to do that well you're in the right place do you want to help yourself because this will help you it's definitely going to help you like I was so amazed at how I felt so much better about myself when I first became an author that blew my mind I was pleasantly surprised by that and if you're someone who'd like to earn more money a lot more money maybe even just enough to cover all expenses to not have to struggle anymore like you know I remember there was a study done where they really wanted to determine is it millions that people really really want well some people do sure but you know what the masses really would rather have they'd rather have enough to cover their expenses They'd rather have enough to cover expenses and it's absolutely possible I mean I'm running a business from the comfort of my home my husband has been retired now for 11 years I mean I'm maintaining uh, we have two homes actually we have two places I'm earning I'm in the top 1% I'm probably in the 1% of the 1% and how did that happen because I became an author because I followed these understandings because I put it into practice because I seek to understand and then applied and now I'm getting the results consistently Marty is saying so do you suggest focusing on writing on something you research your research has shown is in the best-selling category such as healthy eating or write something that you enjoy writing but not sure what that mar market might be awesome question Marty I love that Marty's asking that question here's what I suggest write what you personally feel connected to write what you personally feel passionate about that's what you write about and if it happens to be something in a very popular category like healthy eating awesome you see you're very likely interested in something that is in that is of interest to you and then you're that's what I suggest that you write about 
All right, great. I see Jackie G has bought uh, Pashmina's book, The Cappuccino Chronicles. <laughs> That's awesome. And so there we are. We've got Pashmina who's living in, where are you living, Pashmina? Thailand, I think. And Jackie who's living in New Zealand. And uh, Jackie is sharing right here on the call that she's bought, read, and loves Pashmina's book. Like you never know who's going to read your book. That's also a benefit of being in my program is the connections you make. Question number six, do you realize how ridiculously easy it can be to totally change your life, your circumstances, and your dreams? It can be, but you absolutely must be willing to do the work. You've got to say yes. Say yes to you. Say yes to investing in you. You see, people are really good at two things. They're really good at making money. And they get in the habit of that or they get in the habit of making excuses. You cannot be good at both of those things. You get to decide which one of those two are you looking to become really good at? What would you like to be? I'm going to ask you guys that question. Which one of these two do you want to be good at? Or are you already good at? Are you good at making money? Or are you good at making excuses? Type it in the little chat box here as well. All right, cool. Marty says, I would like millions, but enough to stretch my social security far enough to cover all my expenses with a little leftover. Awesome, Marty. Absolutely doable. And you know, Marty, I suspect you talk about social security. You know, I'm working with people at all ages. I've worked with kids as I've shown you. I've worked with people that are retired. I've worked with people that are in their 90s. I've had authors in my program that are in their 90s. I've never had anyone who is over 100, but I've definitely had ages of, of clients up to around 100. So making money, all right, done with excuses. Let's make the money, says Anne. Yeah, baby, excuses are boring, says Pashmina. Trey says money and excuses to make money. <laughs> cool. All right, guys, way to go. Making money on demand, says Alicia. Yeah. All right, cool. Look at you guys. I like it. Well, you're in the right place. So you can try and attempt to do this on your own, or you can do it with me and join my community. So let's talk about what that would look like. Yes, we have the book writers program. I want to really help you understand what that is because the authors that I attract in this program are, you know, they're people that have decided they're going to be an author, people that are committed to making themselves a great success. So we're going to cover how to write and publish your book, make it an international bestseller, how you can become this worldwide recognized expert, create streams of income that can help you make money and enjoy your life, like really doing things that are deeply meaningful. And it is a phenomenal program. It's my signature program that is valued well over 13,000. I think that number is kind of low. Now, even if I offered it at 50% off, that's only 6541. But you know what? We're offering it now, right now, at 3750. That's the investment, US dollars. You can get into the program right here, right now. So we're going to go through, like, how do you actually write that book, the next book, if you already written a book? How do you create a phenomenal product, like a quality product that looks amazing, that really builds that credibility for you? Getting endorsements from people that are maybe well known in the world. How do you deal with agents and publishers if that's something you want to do? Or publicists, what about foreign rights? What about self-publishing? How do I go about doing that? All of that, I've been there, done it all, work with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of authors at this point, helping them all create success. Now, I've got some bonuses that you're going to get when you, when you join the program, when you make the investment in yourself. So we're going to have live calls every month, twice a month. You have access to me because a lot of people say, well, I want to work with you directly. Well, if my private mentoring isn't available, which is not always available, and it's obviously a different price point than the program, you do have access to me twice a month, get on the call. I'll answer questions until we're done. That's part of the program. It also includes the 21 day author program, write your book in 21 days, if that's something you want to do. And then you get to co collaborate with the other authors that are in the program in a private Facebook group that's only available for the registrants of this program. And then how do you promote that book? How do you make it a bestseller? 21 day promotion program and 21 day revenue, developing multiple streams of income, building that brand, launching a speaking career if that's something you want to do and really creating products and services that can help you live the lifestyle that you desire. So all of these programs, the book writers program, the live Q&A, Facebook private group, the 21 day author, 21 day promotion, 21 day revenue, all part of the program, all online 
immediately accessible for you. If you're somebody who wants to get in there and start working, roll up your sleeves and dive in right now, well, you can do that. That's one of the benefits because it's all available online right now. So all you need to do is go and get yourself registered. Now, while it's impossible to legally or ethically guarantee any kind of particular result, I know you're going to love the program, but you've got to follow through. You've got to follow through. This is something that I been doing for many years, created great success. My clients have created success and you really can't afford not to do it. Like I have seen authors struggle. I've seen authors blow tens of thousands of dollars doing stuff that resulted in nothing, nothing. And it was a shame. It's like, oh my goodness. It's like, <laughs> like I got an email the other day from an author who really doesn't have a clue on what's involved in being a successful author. And that is a dangerous place to, to be. And not doing the book, right? What's it going to cost you if you don't do the book? Now is the time. I think you're really getting that. So if the objections have been there, well, I'm not really a good writer, or English is in my first language, or I don't even have any money. I don't live in the US, and I'm feeling a little scared or skeptical. Well, let's get rid of that. They are just blocks that are in your way. we got a program going on right now that we cap at 100 people. we got 23 spots available right here, right now. And... We got a heck of a lot more that are watching this webinar. So if you're interested, get registered right now. You got to start right now. Instant access, the entire program. You got to have access to me as well. And I'm going to reward you. Those of you that are on here right now, if you're interested and in, in you are made a decision, you're on board. I'm going to be working with you. You're in the program. I'm going to give you a ticket to two live events that you can attend. All right. One is a book writer's program live. That's where I'm going to be in the room. You're going to be in the room. I'm going to be walking you through the process of writing your book. And it's April 17th and 18th in Toronto. All right. That one's in Toronto, Toronto, Ontario. And I'm giving the event to that. I'm giving the freebie to that event right now. Okay. Now, when this, this webinar ends, that's not going to be available. So if you've been contemplating it, get in right now. Okay. The book writer's program live in Toronto. All right, you'll get the details on exactly where it is. It's in Toronto, Ontario. The Prosperous Author Live event is more the money earning side of things, the marketing side of things. It's a live event. It's a bonus, and it's called the Prosperous Author Live. It will be in Ottawa, Ontario. All right, that's where I live, Ottawa, Ontario, June 25th, June 26th. Limited seats at both of those events, all right? So if you sign up today, right now, you are going to be in that program. Now I noticed Zamir, who's from uh, Oklahoma City, all right, perfect, 19, working on a memoir that I'm confident will be a huge success. I love that about you, Zamir, the confidence. I'm so excited. Do I offer a payment plan? Absolutely. There is a payment plan for you, Zamir. You can get yourself registered with a payment plan. It's right on there. You'll see it when you click on the register button. There is a payment plan available. So we will be doing a q and I want to know if you guys have any questions. I'm going to address your questions now, those of you that have stayed on the call. Oh, hang on a second. Let me just go back here a second. Whoopsie. Okay, I have to take my uh, headphone off. Let you hear from a few folks while I'm waiting to see who has questions because I want to address your questions now. We're going to hear from a few folks, some of my graduates that have been through my program. So here you we know, go. I met Peggy. Uh, quite a few years ago when I was at a Bob Proctor event and I remember her being on stage saying that anybody can write a book and, and everybody has a story in them. She really planted that seed back then that I could write a book and last year I'd made a decision that that was the year I wanted to do it and I asked Peggy to, to mentor me. I, I believe that you know when you want to do something you need to find someone who has already done what you wanted to achieve and uh, follow their, their footsteps and you know she really guided me the, the whole way and, and I remember you know her and I doing Skype sessions like early in the early in the morning and you know helping me really get structure around around my book and just to, to get it going and then you know once the book was um, was completed she you know told me how to get it out to them to the market through um, like publishing and the, the editing process and then you know also how to become a bestseller that was my goal is I wanted my book to become a bestseller so she really works with you every step of the way she's one of the most uh, genuine caring authentic people I've ever met 
uh, always has a smile, so giving and so passionate about ha having others. So I can't say enough about her. She's just a wonderful person and I'm forever for grateful that uh, I've had the pleasure of meeting her and also working with her. Awesome. Well, that was very, that was Jacqueline McKenzie. You wrote a book called The Prophet of Profit. And uh, I started working with her just about a year ago and she got her book written and made it a bestseller within about a month uh, period of time, which was really quite extraordinary. While we were doing the webinar, I got a, a text from Nick Peterson, by the way, and he said that one time he got on an airplane and saw somebody reading his book as well. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's hear Peggy from someone McCall else. Peggy is a genius. She is a book <laughs> genius. Um, I went through the, the 21 day author program very, very quickly. I had made the decision quickly to, to write my book and the first draft of it um, had come out basically in, in a couple weeks. And as I was writing on my breaks, <laughs> be taking in Peggy's lessons and they're just so, they're very concise, they're to the point. Um, she fills it with a lot of heart and insights. Um, she really gets into the mindset of what it takes to become a successful writer, a prosperous author. Um, it's so complete. I was really blown away. Um, I've seen her from stage and speaking, but it, it wasn't until I, I got into the programs that I really understood the depth of her knowledge. Um, she comes across as someone who's very fun loving and light on stage and she is, and I love that. And she infuses that spirit with a tremendous amount of wisdom and depth. So I'm forever grateful to Peggy McCall. Um, I've been able to enjoy her live at her prosperous author event and I wasn't really sure what to expect either so I come in you know with uh, an open mind and it it was incredible I think more than more than the wonderful teachings um, it was a really great chance to interact with all of her community I just I just love that. I mean, that's really priceless. So I'm really looking forward to staying connected with everybody. And I'm so thankful to, to Peggy to, to having that vision. And she's created that community for all of us. I mean, she's really here to serve. So <laughs> I'm forever grateful. Thank you, Peggy. You know, I, I love that. I love that she shared that because you talked about the skepticism, right? Like we talked earlier about the objections that sometimes people have. And, you know, some people are like, I'm a very emotional buyer. Like I'll make a decision and I'll just like, boom, you know, I'll, I'll just follow my heart or follow my gut and make that decision. But some people, they you know, they think a little bit differently. They want a little more information, analytical. And that was an example. Hey guys, there. my name is Ron Venata, best-selling author of We Think in Secret. And, you know, I get to announce myself as best-selling author because of two words, Peggy McCall. If you want a step-by-step -step guide, I don't care if you've written your book, already have it written, doesn't matter whether it's on the promotion side, the marketing side, or the writing side, you got those two words, Peggy McCall. I wanna see you here in this event. <laughs> Rowan is adorable. Another author that I was blessed to serve, he wrote a book called we think in secret and he released it recently and made it a bestseller. And I know he's had a lot of fun with his bestseller status as well. Extraordinary guy. Hello, my name is Tom Ramsey and uh, I am here in Sarasota at an event uh, that Peggy McCall has put it together. It's called the prosperous author. The reason that I'm here is because I just wrote a book myself and I was looking how to take it to the next level now that it's all written and uh, she offered this program uh, that has actually answered uh, a lot of my questions. I can't really say enough about the last two days that I've spent here because um, like I said, she has actually given me a blueprint of what I need to take my book to the next level. And that of course uh, is to become a New York Times bestseller and international author. Um, I met Peggy about a year and a half ago at a Matrix event through Bob Proctor. And uh, that's where um, she gave the idea of uh, writing a book uh, uh, as a way for me to get myself out there uh, in a faster and bigger way than any other media actually could do, than a web page could do by itself. So um, it was uh, not too long after that that I started writing the book, and um, it's just been a really great experience. And it. 
I think we're going to go back a little past Tom. Uh, Tom is the author that I shared with you just a minute ago. His campaign for his book, I showed you at, that he ran, what well, he released it about last October, and he just ran another campaign, made it a bestseller. So, uh, Hi, my name is Victoria, and I um, uh, just signed up for the author's program and here at the live event in Sarasota, Florida, and it has been amazing. And I have signed up for other programs trying to learn how to get my stuff out there. And the information, the way Peggy presents it and her heart um, is just what made the difference for me. And everything is really, really clear. I feel very confident about what's happening now. I have all my questions answered. I'm so grateful for just to be here. So thank you, Peggy. Mm -hmm. That's Victoria. She's adorable. Katie does an, an amazing job with her uh, programs. And so with the Best Sellers program, at my time, when I was able to you know, bring it up, go through the course, and then to have the question and answers that she does um, periodically is awesome because you can ask your questions, get real live answers, and then go back to the study. And... At the beginning, I was nowhere, but I have finished my book and in the process of um, getting it launched. So it's awesome. All right. Hey, everyone. I'd just like to offer a big shout out and thanks to Peggy McCall for her mentorship during the time of bringing my book to fruition and into a best selling launch. She was really helpful in helping me understand how the writing process goes and then even further getting a good production, introducing me to the white people in the industry to get it uh, to get it produced and to get it out on the market. Peggy says that people have, everyone has a book in. And if you have that book in you and you haven't written it yet and it's been sitting around for a while like mine had, by all means, get in contact with her and make sure your book gets out there in the world. Make sure you inspire the people you intend to inspire. All right, Mike. Gratitude before me. Gratitude behind Actually, we're going to just go past that one there. That's a couple of the, that little uh, video that we saw there a minute ago is actually a couple of my wonderful graduating authors, clients that were at one of my events and they did a beautiful gratitude song for me. And, you know, one of the reasons why that's there is that, you know, as I mentioned earlier in this, in this call, this webinar that we're having together is the importance of having fun in everything that you do. And when you're having fun, you're gonna enjoy the experience with a whole you know, different level of, of commitment. Now let me just go here, stop sharing here for a moment. There we go, okay, we're back. All right, so you guys can see me? Just type in little chat box over here. I got a, another computer screen here so I can see the little chat box that's rolling on the screen here. Now, for those of you that have already invested in the program, I've noticed we've got some registrations that have come in, welcome you will be instantly given access to the program. You're gonna have your own unique username, your own unique password. There's a welcome video right inside that you're gonna get. You'll see some guidance. I'm gonna suggest where to start, what to do first. And one of the blessings in having this all available online is that number one, instant access. So sometimes there's people that jump on the program and they're like, I wanna study it all this weekend, right? Well, you can do that. Like rather than having to wait and wait and wait, but you do get access to me in our open Q&A calls. Now, if you are someone who's just made a decision and you're joining, it does include a live ticket to the Toronto Book Writers Program and a live ticket to the Prosperous Author Program in Ottawa. There are no other dates booked, okay? So it's not a ticket to some other future event. It's that event. If you can't make it, that's okay. All right, don't worry about it. It's not a problem because you'll have everything that you need inside the online program. Now, I noticed a couple of people had asked questions in the chat box about a payment plan. There is a payment plan. It's there. And I know someone had made a comment about um, a different kind of payment plan. Those are the payment plans that we have. We have the full payment option and then we have the payment plan. But here's what I want you to know. Like I teach prosperity consciousness. I teach about attracting money. And that's a big part of what I do. I actually have something called the morning money class or morning money classes. And if you have not watched any of those videos, I strongly suggest that you do. So you can go to my front page of my website and you can sign up to get notifications of every time I do them three times a week, these morning money classes. But this is what I want to say to that. If you want something, if you want something, and you may not have the means right now, you've got to see yourself with it right? There's always a way. 
There is always a way when you're committed. You will find another way. And if you're thinking right now, there's no way, what are you going to receive? There's no way, right? That's why you got to open up your mind, your consciousness to what possibilities are there. What could potentially you do? All right, that's really, really important. Okay, cool. So it looks like, oh, that's what I did, said Creative 999. Okay, cool. Perfect. Super. Marty says, thanks for the ideas, but I pretty much ran out of infinite pause. There, you'll never run out of infinite. Marty, that's closed-minded thinking. You got to get rid of that thinking. It's not going to serve you. There's another way. There's always a way. Trace Haskins says, my advice for folks with a fixed income, Creative 999's ideas are PayPal credit is great. And I've learned that whenever I want something seemingly beyond my reach financially, it's a challenge calling me to offer something a service to manifest the money. Have sub, sub, subsequently created income to pay for the house down payments, cars, training programs, vacations, etc., etc. I sit and meditate until the idea is revealed to me and then I do it. First key is to visualize it happening. Love that, Trace. Trace is a business partner of mine. He works with me in my business. He's a phenomenal guy. He understands these principles and he is absolutely bang on with that. You got to see yourself. I've had authors who have been saying to me for years, I'm going to work with you in a private mentoring capacity. And they go to my website and they can see what the investment in that is. And they don't have the means to do it, but they have the desire to do it. They have the will to do it. And they're like, just want you to know, Peggy, that I'm going to be working with you and I'm going to get the funds. And inevitably, like I had one client recently, somebody decided to invest in her and gave her the money to take the program. I've had people, you know, take money out of their retirement account, like put money on a line of credit, like whatever it is. If it's something you really, really want, you're going to find a way. All right. There, there's a question here. I'm going to take this last question. We're going to call it a wrap. We've been on actually almost two hours, guys. So the question that I have here is how many books do you have to sell? How to have to sell to be considered a best selling author? It depends. It depends on which list you're talking about. And it's not, and I want everyone to hear this. It is not a specific and exact number. Why? Because the bestseller ranking for books are based on the following. <coughs> Excuse me. They're based on how many books are selling at any given time. And there's different bestseller ranks, but it's not a specific number of books. If you're going for New York Times, you need to sell about 10,000 books in a week in order to do that. Okay, Marty is saying, will the price stay the same if I can't sign up today? I'm going to say, I believe so, but I can't 100% guarantee that. All right. Could you tell us more about MAFA? M A F A. What's MAFA? I don't know what the, Tina, could you tell us more about M A F A? What's M A F A? I don't even know what that is. I don't know what MAFA is. Help me understand what MAFA is, and then I'll, I'll definitely answer that question. Okay. Oh, Creative 999 said, I actually started out little at a time, program at a time, slowly, but eventually I managed getting into the book writers program. Awesome. A Wafa? Wafa. Could you tell us more Wafa? Oh, I guess somebody has, oh, that is exactly what happens to me. Okay, I see. You're talking amongst each other. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I understand it now. All right, so... Um, Wafa, W-A-F-A, -A, as the guest says, that's exactly what happened to me. So I don't know what that means. And maybe my error intended to reference the guest to Wafa. Okay, no worries. Understand. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Okay, so while all that's being sorted out and somebody named Wafa will actually be answering that question, I say go for it. But in the meantime, those of you that are still sitting on the fence, come on over. Come on over. It's so warm over here. It's so inviting over here. It's so much fun over here in the bestseller world. I want to see you get yourself registered so I can start working with you right now and you can start taking action and you can be one of my next success stories. All right. That's what I'd love for you. All right. My pleasure to be here to be of service to you. I appreciate you all. I appreciate you staying on here as long as you did. And I look forward to working with you. Get yourself registered right now. You can sign up at thebookwritersprogram.com, thebookwritersprogram.com, and I'll see you on the inside. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye for now.